Hi, it's Bill Taylor, co-founder of Fast Company Magazine and author of the book, Simply Brilliant. And this is an installment of my video series, Briefly Brilliant. Today's topic is why everyone should write a failure resume. Obviously, we spend most of our time thinking and dreaming about success, how we define it, what we need to do to achieve it, the best ways to document and communicate it. So it may sound a little strange that I'm gonna urge you to document and share your failures. But as it turns out, one of the best ways to prepare yourself to succeed is to be honest about and even to celebrate all those times in your career that you failed. Which brings me to the idea of the failure resume. I first got wind of the idea when a professor at Princeton, my alma mater, lit up the Twitter sphere after someone noticed that he had published what he called a CV of failures, a long list of all the degree programs he didn't get into, the academic positions and fellowships he did not get, the papers that had been rejected by academic journals. Now this failure resume might be seen as a kind of humble brag. This professor graduated with honors from Oxford and has not one but two PhDs and is published and presented so widely that his traditional CV is seven pages long. But there was a reason why he and some other really successful people have started to create failure resumes. A big part of it is to remind themselves that success rarely comes without setbacks and reversals and that a big part of winning over the long term is how you handle defeat and disappointment in the short term. Everybody agrees on the importance of grit and resilience and bouncing back from setbacks. Well, one way to increase your resilience is to reflect every once in a while on all the things that did not go your way and to remind yourself of how well you've done anyway. There's another reason to do a failure resume, especially as you become more senior in your field, a manager or a leader or a role model, and that's because it teaches your colleagues about the true nature of success and helps to prepare them for the setbacks and disappointments they will inevitably face in their journeys. A big part of how we're measured as leaders is how much we contribute to the success of the people who work with and for us. And by writing our own failure resumes and sharing the lessons we've learned over the years, we help our younger colleagues develop the grit and resolve they'll need to be more successful themselves. There's one last reason why it might make sense to create your failure resume. It makes you look more human, more authentic, more interesting to the rest of the world. Everybody is busy trying to stand out from the crowd, to be the kind of person that other people think is worth paying attention to. Well, in a world drunk on success, being willing to share your failure resume helps you stand out from the crowd. In fact, my favorite entry in the Princeton professor's failure resume is what he calls his meta-failure. He says, this darn CV of failures has received way more attention than my entire body of academic work. The historian Arnold Toynbee famously quipped, nothing fails like success when you rely on it too much. Well, we are now in a world where nothing succeeds like failure, especially if you're honest and authentic about it. So if you want to write a failure resume, let me make a few small practical suggestions. Number one, don't chronicle your failures until you do a great job documenting your success. You're creating a resume of failures for a successful person, not a resume of a failure. So you better be sure that your traditional resume is even more compelling and impressive than your failure resume. Number two, be tangible, be specific, be clear about what you learned from your setbacks. Stuff like, I always wanted to be a doctor, so how did I end up in marketing, is not what we're going for here. This is not a form of professional therapy. It's an exercise to create clarity for yourselves and others about the potholes on the road to success. And three, keep it entertaining, even a bit funny. There's a difference between being honest about your setbacks and disappointments and wallowing in hurt and self-pity. That's why most of the failure resumes I've seen, and this may sound strange, are cheerful and upbeat. Everybody likes a winner who can laugh at his or her losses. As Winston Churchill supposedly once said, 
Success is going from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. So don't just celebrate your successes, go ahead and write your failure resume.